Hey, this is Stacy and Megan. With another What We're Cooking and Eating Now bonus episode. In addition to our regular weekly episodes twice a month, we give you a real-time rundown of what we're cooking for our families. In each of these episodes, we'll walk you all the way through one recipe, and then we'll list five others. All in, you get six easy weeknight dinner ideas that we've tested in our own kitchens. You can use our ideas as inspiration or literally turn them into your meal plan for next week. We share the links for all the recipes mentioned in our free community, which you can join by going to didn'tijustfeedyou.com backslash community. All you have to do is enter your email, which we keep private, and look out for our post with all the what we're cooking and eating now deets. Okay, Megan, before we get started, should we give them the heads up? The next four what we're cooking and eating now episodes are going to be a little different, right? Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> They're going to be happening. But y'all, we are helping each other take little breaks this summer. <laughs> much, <laughs> much needed breaks. But without you having to take a break from Didn't I Just Feed You. So after this week, there'll be the two upcoming What We're Cooking and Eating Now episodes after this one. I'll be handling on my own. And I've decided to invite two different friends. So I'll have two guests. I'm very excited. One is a dear friend of mine who lives in Charlotte, North Carolina, single mom with a teenage boy. And the other is someone who lives in Brooklyn right nearby me. She has two kids at home, a 15-year-old and a 12-year-old. She has celiac and so does her 15-year-old daughter. And her son and her husband do not And so we're going to hear what those ladies are making. And then Megan, the two after mine with guest episodes, are how are you going to do it? Are you doing them alone? Are you going to have a guest? I can't wait to hear them. I'm kind of excited that you have a celiac guest because I also am inviting my neighbor who is dairy-free and gluten-free. Nice. But none of her family is as a guest. And then we're bringing back Patty Catalano, my Patty. BFF. Yeah, yeah, we're going to yeah. record live from the beach trip that we're taking together. Is Daisy going to be there? Daisy the oh dog? <laughs> Daisy is now becoming a regular guest on what we're doing now. I love, it so much. I love it so much. Okay. So that's the heads up. We're not going to keep going because we like to keep these short and sweet. You're taking the lead this week, even though we both had a good laugh. How last the last one we're know. cooking and eating now. You know, we eat, we alternate taking the lead where one of us actually talks through a recipe and then the rest of the five recipes are just supposed to be a list. So I had the lead last time. I talked through a recipe. Then it was your turn. <laughs> then you were talking and talking. And I was like, okay, you just talked us through the whole recipe. <laughs> It's very, it was great. It was helpful. I wish you could see my, I wish everyone could see my face and how I'm like a little bit embarrassed. I don't know. I just get excited to talk you about recipes. You got excited. Recipes, and clearly. I actually think it's helpful. The reason why we only talk through one is to keep it to 15 minutes. I think we kept it to 15 minutes, even though you talked through one also. And I'm sharing all of this because I might make the same mistake today. <laughs> I know. So, I was like, I think I should just like introduce the three recipes and then let Stacy request which one I should walk through. Okay, great. Let's How do it. you feel about that? I will say the theme of my week is Instagram inspired. Like Ooh, I love all a good three theme. of the things I'm sharing were from things that I saved on Instagram. Love it. Okay, so here's the list: grilled chicken Caesar wraps from Rachel's The Good Eats on Instagram. Okay. Thai chop salad from Healthy Girls Kitchen, which includes air fried tofu. And then Ali Slagle's sesame meatballs, which do you want to hear about? I want to hear about the sesame meatballs. Okay, because we're on this thing where we love um, Ali Slagle's I Dream of Dinner. Yes, I yes. love meatballs. And the other ones I feel like I get approximately. I do feel like I might have to say... Grilled chicken Caesar wraps gives me like the most 90s nostalgia. I love that. Totally. That's like (laughs) sun-dried tomatoes on the side. Yes, yes, yes. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. Yes. Okay. Um, And you're right. You can like, we'll share the link. You can click through to the Instagram reel and basically you'll get the whole idea there. But so sesame meatballs, Ali Slagle posted on Instagram about how meatballs were like this really trying thing in her book, I Dream of Dinner, because they can be like very beige. If you're getting into any kind of gravy rather than red sauce with meatballs, 
I don't even know what came up in the cap- caption that I was like, oh, sesame meatballs. And then when I did a search, she actually has several, including one on New York Times cooking for meatballs that are not like the classic Italian meatball, but they're either made with pork or chicken and have flavors like ginger and sesame or fish sauce, or there's like a lime cilantro meatball. And I have to say that I've really been on this thing right now where like, I just love mini meatballs. I know they're a little bit more effort to make, but especially for a weeknight dinner, if you just want to like pan fry them and quickly finish them in the oven, I like the size. And I have like a very small cookie scoop that I use to help portion them. Genius. Yes. What do you do? You spray it with cooking spray or oil spray or something and then just scoop, scoop, scoop. Scoop, scoop, scoop. Sometimes you have to reapply a little more oil. You know, also if you don't care about like me, if, or if you have a great scoop, sometimes you don't need the oil, but it's nice because especially with something like pork, it can be really sticky. Yes. Also, can we just tell people that sometimes it doesn't need to be oil, even a tiny bit of water, whether on your hands or in your scoop helps keep the meat from sticking too much. Okay. So I didn't follow, I'm going to be very transparent, which I think happens a lot in these stories where we're like, yes, I was inspired by this recipe, yes. but like, I didn't really follow it to a T. So okay. I, I will share the link to the New York times recipe that belongs to Allie that she developed, but I just took pork, ground pork and added garlic, ginger, sesame oil, some salt, some Aleppo pepper. And that that's it. And Yum. I, there's this tip I learned from the grill dads, which is that if you want to make something that's sort of like sausage or feels more like a sausage patty or like a sausage link, if you really, like if you add like a teaspoon of water and then you really just like beat the crap out of the ground meat, which sounds contrary, everyone's like, be gentle with your meatballs, but maybe that's more for when you're adding breadcrumbs and eggs, Yes, um, which these did not have. It helps the like release some of the protein in the meat and then everything sticks together in a really beautiful way. Does it like emulsify the fat too a little bit? Yes. 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 Cool. So, which is really nice if you want to make meatballs and you're gluten-free and you're like, what, how do I do? It's also Patty's wrote a recipe many moons ago for like a sausage, sausage soup or something on kitchen where she uses actually ground sausage to make the meatballs. Like it's not even... It's not meatballs. It's just ground sausage rolled. Yeah, little meatball yes. thing. Yes, which always begs the question of like, how many sides does a meatball have? I, I don't know why I think about that every time. Because we, <laughs> it was like we one of about our first the... questions. Yes. Did I just feed you? <laughs> yes. yes. So meatball mixture. Beat the crap out of it. Use the little scoop with a little bit of oil in it to drop it into a nonstick pan with a little little more sesame oil just for flavor. Um, browned everything on all sides. I had to do two batches because I have like a smallish made-in okay. nonstick pan. I think it's like an eight inch, so it didn't fit all of my meat, tiny meatballs. Yes. While that was happening, I had a pot of rice going. And then we just had it with like fresh veggies, chopped snap peas, cucumber. I had some pea microgreens. Nice. We served chopped mango on the side. Oh, and I put Omsum's um, miso dressing on top of it. That's what I was going to ask. Any sauce or vinaigrette or dressing, anything? Yeah. You know, uh, we, this is becoming also becoming a theme that... Ella's like not into sauces right now. So I really yeah. wanted to like glaze the meatballs in the end, but I was like, it's fine. I won't. And so I put the omsum um, sauce just on my bowl because Brian was not home that night. What, it's and everyone loved it. Is that yes. The, okay. Yes, and you didn't you. cook it or anything. It was just, you used it as a dressing. I didn't. I used it as a dressing because it's like miso, yuzu. It's like not anything that I felt like it had to be cooked. And it, it sounds was delicious. really good. Would you ever... Just take out Ella's meatballs from the pan and then glaze the rest. Yes. I think the reason I didn't do it that night was because I made the full batch of meatballs, even though it was the three of us, so not Brian. And I was really the only person who was going to have sauce. And I packed the leftover meatballs as lunch the next day. So it was like, it was like opposite. And same thing. I could have taken out like three quarters of the meatballs and then glazed them. Yeah. It just seemed like more work, right? I honestly think I forgot. I think I was like trying to feed the dogs and stuff. I even like, we'll share photos on Instagram maybe, but like I even forgot to take a picture of the meatballs with the sauce on them, which they were so pretty because they have like this beautiful glaze. Like uh, they were caramelized on the outside. Like they looked so good. But for some reason, I only took a picture of like the packet sauce packaging 
on the side, which oh, is so not like me. So delicious. To not get the picture. Ella liked it. Ella liked it. Meatballs are a cool win. with everyone in my house. Okay. So Emmett liked it. Oh, great. Emmett loves a meatball. I do too. I mean, he Emmett's, is a meatball. He's no <laughs> fool. He's so cute. Okay. I love those. Talk to me about the other two. Is there anything else? Okay. That you want us to know that was special about the grilled chicken Caesar wraps or the Thai chopped salad? I think I just want to do the caveat of like Rachel the Good Eats is kind of like health promoting, maybe a little diet culture if you click through on the link. Because it's real. her recipe is really about high protein, which okay. is not, I don't know that that's like a concern for me. But so we ended up doing just like a kale Caesar grilled chicken. I roasted cauliflower and chickpeas and we have that in wraps okay oh everything the kale the cauliflower the yes okay yes yes delicious kids were into that kale and cauliflower and chickpeas all in a wrap the kids did yeah no you know no i was like huh the kids didn't eat theirs as wraps i think that's why i did the chickpeas and cauliflower because they will eat that yeah and i did like sort of like lemon pepper and pecorino on top of the cabbage and chickpeas when they came out of the oven so they had and lemon zest. So Cabbage, they had like. I mean cauliflower. I mean cauliflower. Okay, just making sure. So they had a Caesar vibe to them. Got it. So they had toasted towards the toasted wraps, which is a whole re- wheat wrap, cauliflower, chickpeas, and then the grilled chicken. Got it. Okay. And then the Thai chopped salad sounds pretty straightforward. It's, doesn't it? And like, what is happening with chopped salads on the internet right now? I feel like they're everywhere. Like, everyone's like, oh, the Jennifer Aniston chopped salad, like the green goddess chopped salad. It, I kind of love it. And then we also had friends over for that dinner. And my friend, oh, Billy, who's going to come do a summer what we're cooking now. She's like, you know, I do a version of this and it's like half as many ingredients and equally satisfying. I'm like, I would like that recipe. Very I know <laughs> it's true. Sometimes a <laughs> chopped salad gets real crazy and you realize yes. that it's just about making sure you have a protein, something tangy, something crunchy, and then your veg. Like it doesn't have to actually be all that complicated. Yes, 100% that. And this one has like carrots, cucumber, cabbage, yeah, um, totally. green <laughs> onion, like all of the things. And hers is like cabbage, green onion, and then this, and then like edamame, <laughs> which I did like a, a fried tofu on this. And at the end, I was like, this was so much more effort than it needed to be when I could have just done like steamed edamame as the protein in the salad. I need to talk to you about the fried tofu for one second before I launch in. Uh, yeah. Air fry, because there's a conversation happening in our community and like everybody's kind of flopping on air fried tofu. I did not do it in our air fryer because Bailey came and there's the, because of her gluten allergy, I don't want to put stuff in the air fryer that I'm going to serve to her. I, I probably could do like a really great deep clean, but I didn't have that time to do that that night and okay. then serve it to her or use like, um, I've recently seen like parchment pieces, trays that you can put in your air fryer so that it's not touching the air fryer directly, yeah. but that might impact how we feel about air fried tofu also. So Anyways, I just did my pan fry okay. where I tear it up and pan fry it with a little cornstarch. Okay. So wait, now that you said it, we have to talk a little through. <laughs> you tear it with your hands. Yes. You put it in a bag with a little cornstarch. Shake, 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 shake. You put oil in your pan. When the oil's hot, you put the pieces in and you just pan fry it. It's exactly that. Right. Okay. Great. Sounds like delicious. For your family. See, we accidentally did. We talked through, kind of talked through all of them. So you have time to do that too. Listen, I'm going to go real fast. I made a version of Mapo Tofu inspired by our episode with Kenji that published earlier this week. Yes. So his book came out. It's gorgeous. I have a copy. I encourage everybody else to get a copy. It's an excellent resource. The Mapo Tofu, I made a little bit different. I didn't want it to be quite as spicy. Mapo Tofu in general, the meat is sort of an accent. And my boys are like, where's the meat? Why isn't there any meat? <laughs> so I doubled the meat. It was kind of like mapo ground meat with some tofu thrown in. <laughs> you know what I mean? But anyway, it worked. It was delicious. We don't have the recipe to share unless Kenji shared it with another publication. We'll do a quick search to find out. Otherwise, you can listen to the episode and grab his book. 
I also did sheet pan sausage and cabbage with creamy mustard sauce, which is a didn't I just feed you recipe. I got so excited. I was like, that's our recipe. That's our recipe. My kids love it. And I made it again. And it's a recipe that if you are not already signed up for our newsletter, once you sign up after you listen to this, you will get the recipe as part of the, you know, thanks for signing up. It's part of our spring meal plan. That'll be up for another like month ish or so. But also our community has access to the recipe. So that's where we post these links anyway. So we will be able to include a link there. And I just want to say about this, that creamy mustard sauce, it is not a cooked sauce. So this could not be easier because you're cooking everything on a sheet pan and then you're just kind of shaking up a sauce and then you use the sauce to coat things before it goes into the oven and then you just pour it over the top and it's delicious. And then the last thing I made was kind of something made up. So there's not going to be a link. (laughs) I think I had half as much chicken as I thought I had. And that threw off what I was going to make. And then I thought there was like another vegetable that actually had like gone bad, which I felt really bad about. I had to improvise. So I thought, let me just make a big ass salad. I'll cook the chicken that I do have and I'll cut it on top. And then like, we'll have, you know, bread on the side or something and, and it will stretch the chicken. So that's exactly what I did. I had thin cut chicken cutlets that I put, um, salt, white pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder on, and I just pan fried it and then cut it up. And then I made a salad out of steamed green beans that I cut in half, celery, cilantro, salted peanuts, and then I made a dressing. This was so random, but it came out really delicious. Olive oil, lime juice, rice wine vinegar, chili crunch, a little bit of honey. And then I was like inspired by you once made a dip by just literally mixing chili crunch into yogurt or sour cream. I can't remember which. Yogurt. Yogurt. Yes. But I added a dollop of sour cream to make it kind of a creamy chili crunch dressing. And that was it. I just shook it all up in a jar and poured it over the green beans, celery, peanut, cilantro. And then I topped the whole thing with chicken. And it was delicious. That's the kind of top salad we need. Like where yes, it's like, there you go. and it's limited ingredients, but it's like maximum flavor. Yes, right? So it had like tang in the dressing, spice in the dressing, salty peanuts for both like texture and a little extra like punch of saltiness. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Yes, crunch, crunch, crunch from the, like in two different kinds of crunch because the green beans, I didn't steam all the way through till they were soft. So they were a little bit toothsome, but they were cooked a little bit more than the celery was that super crunch. And then the chicken, I used white pepper on purpose to give it a little bit of a spicier taste without adding more heat spice. And it was great. I was really happy with it. Was it enough meat for the dudes? Nope. (laughs) The whole dinner wasn't enough. So that was one of the nights where it was like they went back like four times for like, we've been doing these quote unquote banana splits where we cut a banana, you put vanilla yogurt on top and then caramel sauce, chocolate sauce, peanuts again, because I have the peanuts out already. Like sometimes they do like shredded coconut. Sometimes they do chocolate chips or they had like one of those and then more yogurt and then, you know, a cheese stick and then, (laughs) and then, and then, and then, but dinner was delicious and it was good enough for me. Also, if I had had all the chicken I thought I had, I could turn that into a satisfying meal. Probably like a bowl of steamed rice on the side would have been great. Yeah. Or rice noodles or something. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I love this Sunday idea. And if you haven't already, I feel like you maybe have. Could you share with us on Instagram? Doesn't have to be Didn't I Just Feed You. It could be Stacey Billis. I don't know why. I want to see all the combinations. Yes, yes. Actually, I should make a reel of all the different combinations. But it's become like a go-to thing that they eat all the time now. And I feel great about it because it's really like sweet. It hits that dessert spot. You get the chocolate chips or the chocolate sauce and the salted caramel sauce. But then they're also eating like a whole banana and a big thing of like yogurt. Yeah. So I feel like it strikes a really beautiful balance. I love it. I wonder if Ella will balk at uh, sweet sauces the way she is about every other sauce at the moment. Oh, there's a test. Oh, you don't like sauce? Okay, then I'll just skip this chocolate sauce. No problem. You're like, what? Wait, no, I want chocolate sauce. 
All right. We mentioned it at the beginning, but can, can we say it enough? Our community, community, community is what's going to keep these bi-weekly episodes coming. Yes. Thank you to the generous support of our Didn't I Just Feed You supporting membership. You can find more about becoming a supporting member at didn't I just feed you.com backslash community. And hey, if it's not the right time for you, don't forget that you can get all the links to this week's What We're Cooking and Eating Now by joining the free section of our community. A huge thank you also to our editor, Samantha Gatsik. Thanks for listening, guys. We love you. Stay sane and well-fed until next time.